Everyone attack together. Take that and suck. I'm a diva. After achieving some critical success with Muramasa last year, Ignition turns to the Wii once again with Arc Rise Fantasia. Rather than pushing the genre forward, Arc Rise Fantasia is a throwback to the PS2 days, emulating the style and feel of other popular series. Is there a viable RPG behind the poor localization effort, bland aesthetic, and excessive grinding? That was easier than I thought! <laughs> Arc Rise Fantasia chronicles the adventures of Lark, a young legionnaire of the Meridian Empire, and his struggle to decide what path he wants to carve through life. The tale centers around religion and political turmoil, with the main cast of characters caught in the crossfire and given the means to determine the fate of the world. Initially, you're led to believe one destiny is the best choice for the world, but things are never that simple in these types of games. Lark's world is soon turned upside down, leaving him to find a way to reconcile with his former friends and decide what side he truly wishes to fight for before the world falls into ruin. There are a few genuinely surprising twists and turns, but they're not enough to overcome the poor delivery. You were either too slow to react, or you've really got some guts. The voice work is absolutely horrendous, making it impossible to get emotionally attached to any of the characters. The writing is on par with your average fan fiction, naive, bland, and sure to evoke some yawns. But even if the production was turned up a few notches, the plot holes are big enough to drive a tank through. You'll slap your head in disbelief more than once before the sun sets on this quest. I thought you were going to call me girl. Do you call everyone girl? Arc Rise Fantasia's structure is best compared to the more recent installments of the Tale series. In fact, it's almost a carbon copy. There's a massive world to explore, divided into open field environments, dungeons, and numerous towns and waypoints. Each serves the same function that we're accustomed to, and there's little deviation from the blueprint. Veterans will be able to jump right in and feel at home, while the opening segments provide enough tutorial elements so newcomers can get a handle on the action. Rather than burden you with random encounters, you're allowed to trigger fights at your leisure, making it theoretically possible to battle at your own pace. This is completely negated, however, by the constant need to grind in order to advance. At first, you'll need to bolster your power in order to overcome the numerous boss encounters, though once the regular enemies shoot up in power later in the game, you'll need to grind simply to survive. It needlessly drags out the length of the game at points, and is just incredibly boring. Sorry to disappoint you. Part of the problem is that brute force is the solution to everything despite the inclusion of an intricate weapon and magic system. As you progress through the game, you obtain new weapons and magical orbs, which can be upgraded and enhanced after much toil. But building up these elements consumes a lot of time and effort, and it's hard to figure out what's useful and what's not. No matter how you cut it, you're gonna spend a lot of time battling remedial enemies just to make any headway. It's not all drudgery, though. There's a guild system that allows you to undertake tons of side quests that score you sweet loot, and there are plenty of secrets and treasures hidden throughout the world. The light puzzle elements in the dungeons keep things from getting totally monotonous, and the bosses provide a worthy challenge that will test your limits. Line of deliverance. Shine upon me. Though Arc Rise Fantasia's battle system borrows heavily from some familiar sources, at least the designers were smart about what they pilfered. The experience is strictly turn-based, though you can reposition your characters during any given turn. You also have the option to play out fights manually or select from various preset battle plans, allowing the AI to handle the action. Typically, there are up to three characters in your party, though occasionally an extra guest will join in. Between all members of your party, you have a finite number of action points to use during any turn. Almost every action costs a set amount of points, and you're free to use them all up or save some for a successive turn. The one catch is that your AP meter is linked to your party count. If any members fall in battle, the meter will drop unless they're revived. This isn't too problematic because the ability point costs scale down to compensate, which gives you a decent chance at a comeback. Aside from your AP, you have an SP meter that builds during battle. If you bank enough, you can execute character-specific special attacks called Excels, and you eventually gain the ability to chain three of them together to trigger destructive unison attacks. Characters can also link up melee and magical attacks to deliver punishing combos, although there's a trade-off. Doing so puts you in close proximity to enemies, making you susceptible to area of effect attacks. There's also a system which lets Lark summon giant beasts to his aid. Gaining control of the first few happens as you play through the story, but securing later ones is dependent on your skill and performance. Well, what kind of a weirdo are you? A weirdo? 
Blurry models and heavily compressed images and videos are just a few of the issues with Arkrise Fantasia's visuals. Character and enemy designs are blatant rip-offs, and the overall look can be summed up as generic. But it pales in comparison to the woeful voice work, which is some of the worst we've ever heard in a video game. Are you stupid? You'd have to be to believe that. Granted, you can turn off the voices and opt for subtitles, but then part of the screen is cut off during cinematic sequences with an annoying black bar. The soundtrack has some standout tunes, but it's not enough to compensate. I think we can make it! There's certainly some ambition behind Arkrise Fantasia, but the game doesn't come close to approaching its potential. The intricate combat mechanics and exciting battle system can make up for the poor production values, not to mention the sheer amount of repetitive grinding the game demands. There are plenty of RPGs out there that do what it does better. What? What are you talking about? What is wrong with you? 